Hey everyone, today I want to talk about power grids and specifically I want to share a very simple and useful design for an automated power grid. What this basically does, it, it helps you create an efficient and easy to use power, power system that you can create almost immediately at the beginning of the game, at the moment when you're ready to transition from manual generators into call generators. And it can also be used uh, as your base expense. It can also be expanded to provide more power and as you, as you, as you grow and, and your base gets bigger. So it's a very effective design. It involves very minimal automation. And yeah, that's about it. So let's get started. So the first thing we need is actually the, well, the requirements for building it. So we're going to need several things. We're going to need the technology for the call generator itself. We're going to need smart batteries, power transformer stack, and then we're going to need um, the automation interface and the wires uh, as well. And finally, what we're going to need is a rock crusher. The rock crusher is needed to create refined metal. Since automation is made by using refined metal, you're going to need a rock crusher early on to make refined metal. So, the most basic configuration you can come up with is a generator, a battery, normal battery, and plug it directly into a consumer. So, the first problem that arises by using this configuration is that this generator is going to work non-stop. Even if the, let's say, this micro musher is not being used for making food, well, the coal generator is just going to supply power anyway, and that power will simply go to waste because it's not used. So you're just wasting resources like coal and just making extra CO2, which we don't need. So the first thing we need to do is to solve this problem, and we can solve it using simple automation. So for this, we're gonna take a smart battery and plug it using a heavy watt wire into the generator. I'm going to delete this wire because we're not gonna need it. Oops. Um, there we go. So the battery is connected. Now let's explain what the smart battery smart battery's role is in this uh, configuration. So when you click a smart battery, you're presented with two bars, high threshold and low threshold. What this means is that as the battery charges up because of the generator, um, once the charge will reach a certain threshold, the high threshold, it will turn itself off, meaning in, and it will set the red signal. The low threshold means that as the battery is getting discharged, as the battery is discharged, and once it passes a certain threshold, the low threshold, it will turn itself back on and send a green signal. What does this mean for a generator? Is that as, as the generator charges our battery and the battery reaches a threshold of 100%, it will turn itself off and send a red signal. When the uh, a red signal, as you can see, disables the building, so it will disable the coal generator. Since it's full, it doesn't need extra power, so the generator doesn't need to work. As the battery, if we, if we connect some consumers to the battery and they use the power, the charge will eventually get depleted. And once it gets to, let's say, 20% low threshold, the, it will turn back on the generator, and the generator will resupply power to the battery. So all we need to do in terms of automation is connect this wire directly to the generator. So this is all nice and well. We have a generator control, but we still need to plug, to, well, we need to provide power to our, to our base in this instance, a micro musher. So the next thing we need to do is plug a transformer, a power shutoff, a switch essentially, and another battery another smart battery. Next, we, we are plugging both of them. When you, 
when you plug a transformer, you plug the large side into the power grid, the power generators, like the coil generator. Make sure you plug it through the switch itself. And the lower side of the transformer, we plug through the battery. And from the battery, we plug it into our consumer. So, the only, the only thing we need to do now is to automate the switch. And I will explain exactly what's going to happen now. So, this is, best, this is the entire circle now completed. Let's explain what it actually does for us. So, as, the, as this battery, as the main battery which controls the generator is charging up, it will also charge the second battery. And the second battery is directly connected into our into our circuit, into our base. When the battery itself, let's, when the battery, uh, the battery, the second, the secondary battery is is getting char is charged up. When it is charged to a high threshold, high threshold of one hundred percent, it will send the red signal and it will deactivate the switch. This will disconnect the battery from the main power grid. And it, will, and it will just supply power to our base. Now, as power is, is depleted and charge is depleted, once it reaches a certain threshold, it will plug itself back into the, it will plug itself back into the grid and will get charged up by the first primary battery. And it will so on and so forth. So this is the entire concept, basically. Now, you might ask, why do I need the second battery? Why can't I just pl plug the entire wire right into the circuit? The reason is that when we have just one circuit, well, it's not really needed. But once we get more circuits in, so let's make some room. But once we are, if our base grows and we need to plug more circuits, then we're gonna we're gonna need. Uh, this battery is going to come into play. Now, what is a circuit before we continue? A circuit is effectively a bunch of consumers plugged in with the same wire connected in a closed loop back to your battery, for example. So if I take, um, let's say, I put some um, more consumers, some random consumers, uh, another micro sure. If we, play, if we plug a wire between them, this this entire entire this entire thing complex is called a circuit because all those components share the same power line. Now there is a finite amount of consumers you can plug per circuit because the the wire itself has a limited watt power it can carry. So, in this case, its max wattage is said to be 1000 watt. And if you plug a cons uh, enough consumer that they produce in total one, more than 1000 watt and they work simultaneously, if that threshold is breached, then the wire will overload and the circuit will, will fry. So, at some point, you need to create another circuit so you can plug more consumers. So, so we can effectively, to do that, we can, we can effectively expand this simple design and create another circuit. And to, to do this, all we have to do is plug three components of another power shutoff, a transformer, and another battery. So let's do this. Let's take another smart battery over here, a transformer. And a shot of valve. So we're going to do the, exactly the same thing. We're going to plug the main power grid from the generator all the way into the transformer through the switch, connect the lower side of the transformer into the battery, and from the battery we can plug it to a second circuit. Finally, we finish, we finish with the automation for the switch and set the the values for the batteries. Now, regarding the values for the secondary batteries, I recommend putting keeping high threshold on 100%. We want the battery to be fully charged before it disconnects itself from the grid. And for low threshold, it is important 
to not put it on zero because if you put this on zero and the battery will will run out of charge and for a moment just before it gets charged up your base will have a temporarily power out and it will have you will see a lot of flickering light in your base so there is no need it's better to charge the battery before it runs out so i like to keep it on 20 percent 10 percent is nice just don't put it on zero so what happens now is that we can create another circuit with uh, let's say uh, with, with more with different components yeah let's say put an aqua tuner and we can plug plug it just like this so what what the, what what's this is basically two different circuits this is circuit number one it is fed by one secondary battery and the second circuit is fed by a different battery by the second battery and is feeding completely different uh, consumers they see they are not interconnected so they don't share the same wire and in this form you can share power uh, without overloading your wires so this is this is the nice flex this is how flexible this design is you can continue expanding if you need more power if you need more circuits you can always just build another layer you can always build another smart battery another transformer another power power shut off connect it to the power grid add the automation and you're good to go you can do this infinite amount of time as long as you have enough power from your generators and room to build of course so if we want more power if we want to add more generators, all we have to do is we can just pl plug another generator. Remember to add the automation. All you need to do is extend the automation wire so the smart battery will control the second generator as well. And connect it, of course, with the power line with the heavy watt wire. And that's it. That's basically the entire, the entire design. So before we finish, I just want to show you how it actually works in a real game. And we can see how things move, how, how the automation actually works in the live game. And I will expand, I think hopefully it will make, a, make it more clearer if, if you somehow got confused during this process. So here we have this, this exactly the same design. Since my base in this case is fairly new, I don't need a second circuit. So this is just one circuit and two generators. So it's exactly the same connection. We have a main power grid directly connect connected to the controlling battery and the secondary battery. So as I pause right now, we, we see that the main battery is fully charged. Therefore, the generators are turned off. They are not producing any power. And we have the secondary power, the secondary battery also sufficiently charged. So it disconnected itself from the main grid. So basically, every, nothing here is working. Not, nothing here is working because the batteries are charged. So let's play and see what happens. See, the secondary battery charge is being depleted because the base is consuming power. So once it gets to 20% of its total power value, let's see what's going to happen. It goes slow, and once 20% is around 4k capacity once it got to that point it triggered it got activated it enabled the power shut off connected itself to the power grid and is now siphoning power from the main battery and as the main battery is being depleted eventually it will enable back the generators and the generators will supply it with power and as you can see, the secondary battery is now fully online. It will disconnect itself from the system and the process kind of repeats itself. So pretty compact. I think it's pretty simple. And that, that, that's it really. So I really hope this was, this was helpful. If you have any questions, comments or feedback or anything you would like to know, something I missed, feel free to write it, write it in the comments. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.